Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting to be here. This is a great school. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm excited to be here. And I'm going to be talking to you about creativity. And I think that this school is very famous for its creative way of teaching. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Great. Okay, well, let's get started. And I want to talk about Picasso a little bit because when most people are asked about creativity, they think about the visual arts and they think about Picasso because he was a creative genius. And then I want to also uh, mention Rembrandt just so that you get a contrast to what Picasso did because Rembrandt was very realistic in his paintings and we'll see an example in just a minute. But Picasso started with very traditional art and he painted things that almost looked like photographs. And the more he learned about art, the more he took on childlike qualities and incorporated them into his art. They were both very innovating for their times. Obviously, Picasso was working in the 1900s and Rembrandt was working in the 1600s, primarily in the mid-1600s. Now, when I'm asked about creativity, I um, usually think of the sciences and I think of Einstein because it is all of those great scientists that have come up with revolutionary new ideas are very creative people. They have a very creative mind. And Einstein, of course, we know had a very creative mind and he changed the world of physics. Someone was wearing, I guess the person, is she back here? Oh yes, I, <laughs> that's wonderful, you're wearing the same. <laughs> Einstein photo, except you've got it multiplied by several. <laughs> um, was Einstein a genius or was he born with special talent? Well, the answer to that is yes. However, scientific research shows that anyone can be creative. What happens over the years is sometimes creativity kind of gets bounced out of us by our parents or our teachers or just society in general. So creative thinking is simply taking a broader, more imaginative approach. And here the key is imaginative approach to solving life's everyday problems, right? And you're so young you may not have problems, but you kind of do. You have homework to do and you want to go out and play. So, you know, do you go play or do you do your homework? Well, probably both if you can, you know, if you're very creative you'll do both. I'm going to introduce one more thing that your teachers may feel that I should not bring up and that's daydreaming because uh, a lot of people feel that daydreaming is kind of wasting time. But daydreaming when it's used correctly is about kind of meditating on an issue or a problem that we have to solve and I use problem in the sense of like a mathematical problem. and. By doing so, you can have um, ideas come to you that wouldn't otherwise because daydreaming can be the collaboration between the imagination and the subconscious mind. And so when you're in that meditative state, then ideas from the subconscious mind just bubble up and they come to your conscious mind. Now some people call that intuition and in fact that is what Einstein called it. And I'm going to quote him here because I love this quote. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. I love that quote. So I just thought I'd share it with you. <laughs> 